and are up. Episode 11, Deron Carter. Let's go. And are up, Edmonton. Touchdown, Elks. Deron Carter is our guest this week on Antler Up. Uh, Deron, how you doing, man? Thanks for joining us. I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. Tell me about life in green and gold. How's it been for you? Uh, life in green and gold has been great. I'm, a, I'm ecstatic to be out here playing, you know. Uh, I'm like a kid in a candy store. You know, I get, I get to come out and, and play a kid's game for money, and, and every day I'm loving it. You had to wait a long time to make the debut. You're, it's kind of interesting because there's a lot of excitement. Jerron Carter's coming. He's going to play. He's going to be a safety. He's going to be a DB. Day two of training camp, Jerron Carter disappeared. Man, yeah. It, it was a surprise myself. Um, but I, I think, you know, it was uh, necessary for me, you know, coming back, coming off of not, not playing and everything and being able to sit back and, and watch everybody, watch the game, let it soak in a little bit, and, and then be able to come back and, and, and do the things I need, I need to do and necessary for Coach Jones. The backstory is you got hurt on day two, uh, started the season on the sixth game, and just got to debut last game against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Uh, how'd you feel? Uh, you, interception, you had one tackle and an interception. I used to make a little bit of an impact, right? right yeah, away. yeah. You know, I got I got a few plays on defense. Uh, you know, I was in the return game. Uh, it, it felt good. You know, that was my first time having pads on in about two years. So, you know, it felt good to be back back out there. Uh, I definitely was tired. I, I can tell you that. So, you know, I've been working on working on my conditioning and getting, getting back running because I haven't been running due to my injury. And, you know, just, just working to get back to uh, 100%. And, you know, uh, I don't feel like I'm there yet, but it's every day I'm getting better and better. And as the season goes on, I think you'll see better plays from me. As you said, you hadn't played for a long time. Like everybody else, you didn't play in 2020. You didn't play in 2021. So you wait a long time to play again. You get hurt in training camp. You have to wait till game seven. And then it's a bye week. You got to wait even more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, definitely. You know, um, I, I would say it, it, I wouldn't have written this book this way in a sense. But uh, we're here now. Uh, we get to go. Coming off the bye, we get to go against an opponent, you know, that we have a lot to show against. You know, we didn't we didn't show a lot at all in our last matchup. So, you know, I'm really excited to go to Vancouver. Uh, what'd you do in uh, 21? Did, did did you get offers? Were you entertaining something, or did you say I'm just gonna step away? Yeah, none. You know, there's nothing that you know was it seemed too enticing. You know, I, I have been a, a, a pretty solid veteran throughout the years, and you know, there's, with the COVID and the traveling, and, and you know, maybe prorated salaries, and it was a whole bunch. I just decided that you know it was best for me to to stay home and maybe you know look at other options. What'd you do that year? Uh, that year, I was the head coach uh, junior college football North Palm Beach prep nice how'd you do uh man our season actually got shut down early from COVID we ended up going two and three and not finishing the season uh I was the defense head coach and defensive coordinator so you know I got I got to you know see my own defense out there for the first time uh this was your first foray into coaching yes sir this is my this is my first year so you started at the top yeah you you, man uh uh our head coach at the time uh, had ran into some family issues. He couldn't he couldn't maintain the job, and our um, I was about to say general manager, our athletic director, uh, uh, he already saw the relationship I had with the kids. And, you know, they responded to me, and, and, I, and I know a little bit of football myself, and it was just an easy transition. Yeah. Now, what was it like coaching? Like, what was it like? You said you had a good relationship with the kids. Tell me about that. Trying to you know, is high school? Uh, it was it's the it's the year after high school. Okay. So it's like a post grad situation. Okay. And so they're all seventeen, eighteen. Yes, sir. Yeah. It was it was I was dealing yeah. with about thirty five to forty five Deron Carters. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say back to when you were seventeen Man. and eighteen and somebody tried to tell you what to do. How'd you react? Okay. Yeah, you know, and it, it, it was always I was always the level headed coach in a sense, you know. I I had some some yellers and some disciplinary coaches, you know, that that just for that, uh, but for me, I always saw myself uh, in my players. You know, the, the the decisions that they made, how they got there. I always saw, you know, myself in it because I I did it before, and you know, uh, I just always tried to be relatable, but always be an authoritative figure. You know, to get what we need done. You know, I felt like uh, we were we were a great football team. We ran fast and everything, and. 
you know, listening and being able to take coaching is definitely a part of that. I always thought it's hard for a coach because there's a line you got to walk, right? You want to you want the players to like you, you want the players to respect you and learn from you, and you kind of got to be their friend, but you got to be their taskmaster at the same time as well. It's a, it's a hard line to walk, isn't it? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I definitely caught myself teetering, you know, from being being a friendly coach to, to being the disciplinarian, uh, you know, because you're teenagers. Teenagers can't uh, – not that they they don't want to. It's just you know sometimes they have different priorities going on in their life. But if you know if we can sit here for two hours and we can get this this focus going, you know we're gonna. I my goal was to help them not make the small mistakes I did when I was at their age. When I was at their age, I, I failed out of college. Luckily enough, I was good enough to football for foot football. You know somebody somebody always wanted me, but I never took school serious in a, in a sense. So. You know, it kind of set me back, and I, I just wanted to make sure that the kids that were under, you know, sort of my my eye, I, I can get them, to, you know, to sort of learn from my mistakes. Yeah, you talked about your college career. I want to get to that a little bit later. But first, so you're a coach. Uh, you've had a lot of coaches. I mean, you go, I think, three or four colleges. You've had six or seven pro teams. You've been around in the NFL with some teams. Who are the coaches who have impacted you, and what did you take from some of those coaches that you wanted to emulate to your kids? Uh, man, probably Nick Saban when I was at when I was at the University of Alabama. Uh, he's one of the greatest football minds I, I, I've been around. Uh, he understands every position, every play, defense, offense, special teams, and and that's why he's that's why he's one of the best coaches you know in the world at, at, at this sport. Um, he, he knows everything. There's not a there's not a speck of football that he doesn't know for his team, and that's how I wanted to, wanted to be. Because when you can set that example and you know what everybody's supposed to do, you can explain what everybody, you can show everybody how they're supposed to be doing it. You know, it, it creates sort of a, a raised level, and everybody raises their level up, and, and you know, we can become a great team. What about your CFL coaches? Uh, my CFL coaches, I, man, I would honestly have to say that Coach Jones is is the one of the closest resemblances I've ever seen to Nick Saban. I mean, from from the way that they carry themselves, the way that they we run practice, the meticulous, how they, their attention to detail. Uh, man, Coach Jones is an um, amazing coach, and he is, it's crazy. He gets a bad rap in the media and every day. He's a great people person. Like all, all the guys, everybody loves him. If you play for Coach Jones, you love him. He doesn't get a bad rap from this media guy. I love talking to him. I love how he knows everything about every player. Uh, he can You can name him a player, and he'll tell you where he went to high school, what his 40 time was, and where he played. He's just got – he just soaks everything up. And I can see the comparison with Nick Saban uh, saying that he knows everything about the game. Like, that's what – Jones is like that too. I mean, he just, he just knows both sides of the ball. He knows special teams. And I don't think there's been a time where I've had a conversation with him or I haven't walked away thinking, I've learned something about football. Oh, him, man, you, you can go to his office right now. He's watching some some type of football. Man, I've 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 walked into his office and he's had on arena football from Kansas. Like you, you wouldn't even you wouldn't even believe where he's finding guys. But he man, he loves football. Every every day, every second is about football for him. That's we we joke. The only thing he likes about the bye week is he gets more time to watch film. Right. That's, that that is a, that is exactly what he does on, on his free time. He works. How did you how did you hook up with him again? Uh, Walk me through last off season when you decided, yeah, I'm, I'm going to come back and I'm going to play for Chris Jones in Edmonton. Oh uh, well, did I, you reach out first or did he? Oh uh, well, we were talking to each other uh, when he was in Toronto in 2021, uh, but never really got any anything you know solidified. Uh, but as soon as as soon as uh, he was, you know, announced as the general manager, head coach here. You know, I sent him a congrats, correct, congrats, coach, and you just like, shoot, you you trying to play? <laughs> that was just like, you know, you know, of course I'll come play for you. Yeah, and uh, I, here's one thing I want to ask you. I look back over your record. Okay, so you're in Montreal to start your career. Yes, sir. you get released by Jim Pop, mm-hmm. right? You end up going back to play for Jim Pop in Toronto, right? Mm-hmm. You get released by Chris Jones in Saskatchewan. Mm-hmm. You come back to play for Chris Jones in Edmonton. You're a forgiving guy. <laughs> Man, you know, yeah, when you from the outside from the outside looking in, it it seems like that, but there's always man 
there's always situations in football that, you know, you can't resolve on the field. You know, there's front office people. It's a business at the end of the day. And uh, I can I can admit, I guess, uh, earlier in my career, I was a little bit brash. I've never been a, a dis- Yeah, yeah. I've never been a disrespectful person or anything. I mean, everybody loves me all the but they – I can guess you can say, for lack of a better word, misunderstood. My how I represent myself on the field is completely different how I represent myself as a person in in real life. They're two different people. I see myself as a gladiator, a warrior, on the football field, but and outside the football field, I'm just a re- I'm regular, nice Deron Carter from Boca Raton, Florida. <laughs> and you have. A huge, wonderful personality. I think everybody know, knows that. They see the smile and, and they know it's Deron Carter. You talked about Chris Jones getting a, a bad rap in the media uh, and he's not like what a lot of people portray him as. It seems like, to me that you're not like what a lot of people portray you as either. Have you? How do you feel trying to fight that all the time? No, I, do, do I don't. No, you know, yeah, no, I don't. And that, that's, you know, it, it's, it's kind of put me in certain situations where, you know, I – people have their opinions and they just get to say it without me having to say it. I, I just uh, allow it, man. I can't affect everything. I, it used to get, um, be upset. I used to be on social media a lot in, um, you know, talking with fans, messing with fans, having with jokes. But, uh, when I wasn't playing that stopped and I felt really good. <laughs> like I felt it, it was good not having, Joe Bob from Alberta telling me how bad I was every day. Like when, it, man, it's crazy how the things people say to you on these social media sites. Like every day, every day, every day, every day. And when it stopped, I was just like, yeah, I'm not gonna enter myself back into that world. And Joe Bob from Alberta only said that when you're with the writers, though. Right? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, 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 man, you know, it's it's crazy how one one in one second the same person could could love you and be talking so great about you and then in the ne- the next day some something that maybe is unrelated to you they they're dogging you you know and you know it you people don't understand how that can wear on somebody's mental cuz they're seeing it like i see every time somebody says Durang or, or said Duran Carter on Twitter i saw it like good or bad yeah. it, it, I, and you know it, it it affects you whether you like it or not one day good, one day bad. That's Twitter in a nutshell, right? For sure, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, and you're not on it at all anymore. Oh uh, no, well I, I'm I'm a ghost. I'm a ghost on there. I'm there. Yeah, yeah I sneak. I sneak. Yeah. Yeah, I sneak. Yeah. I sneak in there. But yeah, no, I, I don't. I don't comment. I'm not there to get get into it with people. I'm just there yeah. to to eavesdrop. Twitter though provided the CFL with one of the great CFL moments with you. When you, I think it was in Toronto, you took a bunch of fans out to a movie. Yes, sir. Tell me about that, how that came about and how it turned out. Man, so uh, it was a playoff game, and uh, being in Saskatchewan, I knew that there was going to be a whole bunch of Riders fans in Toronto. I mean, that game, half, more than half of the crowd was all green. It, it was amazing. And I just wanted to to do something, you know, for the fans, the people that are traveling, you know, across the country to go to come see us play. You know, it is an opportunity to, to to you know for the fans to meet me off of the field, you know, because they only see me in one light. And and just for me, you know, to interact, I had I had fun that that day. It was a day before the game. You know, we saw a great movie. I got to relax, and, you know, and go into the next game. You know. Feeling good with all with all those people, you know, kind of on my shoulders and with me because you know they were they were ready at the game at the game too. It just felt great. Yeah. How many people showed up? Man, I think it was 30, 32 movie tickets. Yeah, something like that. Thirty That's in pricey, the thirties. It was it was pretty pricey, but I had prepared for it. I had prepared for it. I had prepared for it. It was like yeah, I came up like I saved like a couple hundred dollars two weeks before to it, and then boom, it was easy. You knew you were doing it, so yes, yeah. sir. Excellent. All right, uh, you meant you talked about your college career a, a little while ago. I, I read an article this morning. It was about it was about you and your dad, and I think your quote was about your college career. It's a lot of bad decisions. Yeah. Uh, how tough was that time in your life? Oh, uh, man, I wouldn't particularly say it, it, it was tough. I mean, sitting out and, you know, having your name you're suspended for the Rose Bowl on the ESPN ticker at the bottom, going across every day, every day, it's, it's not it's not fun. But, uh, man, I, I, all I can say is that uh, when I was younger, uh, 
only thing I took serious was football. I knew I, I knew I was good at football. Uh, I knew I was going to be a professional football player. I knew I was good enough. I, I knew. And so when it, when it came to school or any of these other things, you know, I'm, obvi- I'm obviously uh, not the dumbest cat around, but it, just, it was just something that I didn't prioritize because I knew where I was going. Like I, and I guess growing up the way I did, and it kind of put me in a mindset that I was just ready to skip all the stuff, all the steps that you had to do to get to be to become a professional and and like like you said it was just, it was just you know bad decision after bad decision after bad decision and and finally finally I got, I got to so many decisions after so many years that I just had to go pro <laughs> like I just had I just <laughs> had to get, yeah, yeah I just had to I just had to get out there and and luckily uh Jim Pop took me in and I got to start my career uh that, that's what they say but people don't realize uh being a pro football player is hard, right? I mean, if, if it was easy, more people would do it, as they say, right? You know? Man, uh, you know, I, I come in or working uh, in, I would guess, the nine to five sector, in a sense, uh, my first two years coming back, uh, CFL contracts when you're, when you're a rookie are, are not very lucrative. I used to have, I worked in a financial foreclosures office, nine to five job. I had my own cubicle and everything. And, it was terrible. Like, man, I, I there was there was I, I just not there was there was not the same camaraderie. The people in there, it, it, it wasn't the locker room. I didn't get to go out there and I got got to compete. It just was not something that I wanted to mm-hmm. wanted to do. And so I understand where you know where people look at it and they're like, oh man, you play a kids game for a living. But if they were treated the way we're treated in our profession and their profession, they wouldn't last. It, and it took me a, a second to appreciate the things I do out on the football field because when I had to go to work, wake up and, and, and shuffle papers and type all day, man, it was not fun. So it gave me an, 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 uh, an appreciation for what I'm doing out here. Me and Deron Carter hanging out in the Joey Moss suite high above the brick field at Commonwealth <laughs> Stadium. We got uh, part two coming up after this. Yes, sir. The bye week is over for the Edmonton Elks. They're back on the field for their next game tomorrow night. They're in Vancouver to play the BC Lions. The Elks are 2-5. and five. The Lions are 5-1. and one. Uh, If you're going to watch the game on TV, you, of course, head to TSN. If you're going to listen to it on the radio, you, of course, head to 6.30. Ched, we've got you covered there with the pregame show beginning at 6.30 from Vancouver, the Elks and the BC Lions. Next home game for the Elks is going to be Saturday, August the 13th, and that's going to be a very special day here at Commonwealth Stadium as the Elks will honor three members from the five in a row Grey Cup championship teams. Their names will go up on the wall of honor. Ed Jones, Joe Holloman, and Jim Germany all will be honored at that game Saturday, August 13th. It's an 8 o'clock start on the Saturday night. You can get all your ticket information from Ticketmaster. You can also head to GoElks.com for the Elks and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders on August the 13th. Before that, though, don't forget, tomorrow night, Elks in Vancouver to play the BC Lions. The Antler Up podcast is recorded in the Joey Moss Championship Suite. The Joey Moss Suite opened in 2022 to honor Joey, his great legacy, and to remember one of Edmonton's greatest heroes. The Joey Moss Suite is a great place to watch an Elks game from. To learn more about how to purchase the Joey Moss Championship Suite for an upcoming Elks game, email partnerships at goelks.com. Back with Deron Carter. I got a little something to play for everybody here. Uh, Deron, tell me about this. (laughs) Oh man, this is Wait, wait, wait. We got to we got to hear some singing first. That is uh, DC No Name. He does have a name. His name is uh, Deron Carter. That's right off Apple Music, man. Yes, uh, sir. Tell me about your music career. Uh, man, uh, it's actually pretty successful, man. I, uh, I have the Mike Riley song a lot. Of, it gets played. That's placed. the one we just heard. Yes, that is the one we just heard uh, when I was in uh, BC with, with Hall of Fame, future Hall of Famer Mike Riley uh, made, made a, a great song. Uh, I've also I've had a song on the video game NBA 2K22. Uh, man, it's 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 fun, man. I love making music. It's something I got into 
uh, while being a pro, you know, just have having some extra free time on my hands. Uh, it's it, it allows me to sort of, you know, relax and get the things that are on my mind. They're sort of things that I want to address, not even for myself, maybe in the world. You know, it allows me to express myself, you know, because I'm off, I'm off of Twitter and stuff like that. And I use those as ways to express myself. So now making music, you know, it's a, it's, I feel it, it's a planned attack to get all of my feelings out there into the world. So you're gonna be making more music. I yeah. Know, I was, how much stuff do you have out there? I was I was looking again today, and there's you got a lot. Yeah, of music I, on yeah. There. I have about uh, three EPs out there. I got a whole bunch, whole bunch of singles out there. Yeah. So if you if you see DC No Name or if you give DC No Name a, a search, you're definitely gonna find something you like. You, uh, tell me about putting it together. You you wrote the music and the lyrics. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everything everything you hear is all me. It takes and, it takes a lot of time. And how much? What's the what's the music? Is it is that electronic? Is it a band? Is it uh, man, how do you put that together? Man, uh, sometimes I have uh, certain artists that come in. You know, they specialize on like a guitar. Like on that song, I, I had one of my friends come in and he did the the guitar playing on there. Uh, but for me, it, it it's all free uh i don't i try not to go in there with anything written or anything like on my mind and just i let the music flow throw, flow through me in a sense and whatever i'm feeling whatever whatever uh uh comes out it comes out and that, that's the way it, it happens all right so wherever you download this podcast go back and check out dc no name and listen to some music so that's uh it's cool i've, I've, I've been listening to it a little bit today before we came up oh, so thank that's good. you man that's good uh all right you grew up in football, right? I yes, mean, sir. like, I mean, you had football all around you from the day you were born. What was that like growing up? Obviously, everyone knows your dad was Chris Carter, Hall of Fame receiver. Uh, what was it like being around football at such a young age? And, and you know, it's been your whole life. Man, you know, you don't you don't recognize it in, in really until you're a young adult. And, you know, how fortunate I was, you know, to be around Randy Moss, Deion Sanders, Emmitt Smith, Reggie White, and all these, all these, all these people. These are like my god dads in, in a sense, you know. And uh, you don't. I didn't really have an appreciation for it because that's just what it was every day. I went to, when I went to work out, it was I was out there with Uncle Randy working out, you know. So for me, it was that. That just was life. That's how I thought life life was. And uh, I took advantage of it, man. Uh, like I try to, my, my dad will tell you, my favorite receiver is Randy Moss. <laughs> you know, <What? laughs> <laughs> my, my dad will tell you, my favorite receiver is Randy Moss. And, and man, I, I used to watch Deion Sanders in the locker room, in the Pro Bowl, and how he handled himself, and how he handled himself on the field. And he was the best, and, and you know, and uh, it kind of. I, I guess you could say I, I was I was football spoiled growing up, uh, seeing all the things I got to see. Uh, that it, it put me in a mind state to where that's what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to be, you know, in my life. We had James Wilder Jr. in here a couple of weeks ago uh, on Antler Up, and you're in a different situation than him. His dad also an NFL player and, mm -hmm. a, and a really good one, but his dad retired before James was born. Your dad, you were, I think, nine or ten? When yeah, yeah, retired? about ten, yes, You sir. got a chance to watch him play, which must be – helps the memories even more. Like James was saying, I just get to watch tape. But you actually remember him playing. I read – uh, he had a signal for you. Yes, sir. That he that he gave you all the time in games. Yes, tell sir. me about that. Well, you know, um, whenever he made a a big play, a big play, he would do his first his first down thing. But his first down thing would always be to us. We always had the same seats right in the corner in the end zone where the Vikings ran out, and he would come and get us after the game. You know, we would jump over the rail. We were in the same seats every time. If he ever got hurt, he would have to give a thumbs up to make sure. You know, that we saw the thumbs up to know that he was okay and everything. And I still do that to this day. So it, it, my mom my mom knows that if I give a thumbs up and I'm out there on the ground, she knows if I'm okay when, when she's watching. And, you know, that, that's, our, that's our football language. Nice. You don't do too many first down signs anymore. <laughs> nah, 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 man. <laughs> uh, Hall of Fame uh, 2013, your dad goes into Canton. Uh, you're on stage with him. That must have been just such a powerful day. Man, you know what? It was it was actually not because that day um we had already scheduled scheduled a week before I was going to leave. I was on practice squad in Montreal and 
that week, one of our receivers, Jamel Richardson, a really good receiver, got hurt. And I had to leave the next day to go to my dad's Hall of Fame thing. So I missed my first game that I would have been up. It's it's crazy, it's crazy, right? I'm like I'm super, I'm out there celebrating with my dad, and just looking back, I'm like, man, I could I should have been playing. And uh, luck, luckily, Jim Jim Pop, you know, uh, he he waited for me. They played that game, came back, and I played the next game. Uh, I had one catch for 64 yards, and that started my career. Nice. You just had to wait a week. Yeah, <laughs> man, oh man, I was like, man, I don't know if they if they're gonna if they can, if they're not gonna bring me up anymore. I was just like, oh man, but I had to you know keep a straight face because we were, we were supposed to be partying for my dad getting into the Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah, it, it was a conundrum. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a tough decision for sure. I, I saw a picture of you though. You got to take the take the drape off the bus. And yes, everything. sir. That's, that must be pretty cool. Oh yeah, no, yeah. definitely being. I mean. Being up there with you know football, great. I got to speak with Jerry Jones, you know, talk talk to him and my, the Mike Dick guys. Everybody there, you know, it, it it's a tight knit community. You know, there's I, I guess there's probably what around three hundred or so Hall of Famers in there. You know that have that have ever played, and so you know just to be part of that for a small time has felt great. Uh, you're a defensive back now. Uh, used to be a receiver. You're you're a kick returner. You even threw a touchdown on the CFL, didn't you? Yes, sir. I have. That was 2019? Uh, 19, yes, yeah. sir, in BC. In, in BC. Who was it to? Uh, Shaq Johnson. Shaq Johnson. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, you're, you're an athlete, man. You, it's hard to put a position by you. What do you like playing best? Quarterback. Yeah? <laughs> I don't know if you're going to get a chance. No, you know, I, met, I mess with uh, – because, you know, in Saskatchewan in 17, uh, we had quarterback injuries. So I had – I'm the I'm Coach Jones' emergency quarterback. If all the quarterbacks had ever went down, all of them went down, hopefully that never happens, I'm the guy that gets to step in and play quarterback. Is that the case this year too? Man, you know, we have we've we've we're getting close there. Yeah. I'm I'm I've, I'm getting my offensive game plan this week. You know, they 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 they're, they're joking with me about it, but when it, you know, that the same way I became a DB is is in that, you know, I told coach, "Hey coach, I could I I think I could do it." Yeah. You know, and so over the over the weeks and and so, you know, I start taking more reps and more reps and I and yeah, I used to take quarterback reps all the time in practice and practice in SAS just to be ready. So, you know, man, I just I love football, man. And I I feel like I can I can play any position except O line. I'm not I'm yeah I'm not trying you to need block two or three anybody. of you to play. Yeah one yeah you sure. know, but uh, but I know it I know it I can teach somebody how to play yeah. it. Uh, but I just love football so much, man, it, it, and it's just anything about it. All right, uh, last three questions on Antler Up. We call it the Red Zone. So we got three questions for okay. you. Uh, you can answer long. You can answer short. Whatever you want. Uh, first CFL game you ever saw. The first CFL game I ever saw. Wow. The first CFL game I ever saw. Well, I'll tell you this. I had never seen a CFL down until I got to training camp in Montreal. And we were running, we were running team, and he got the first down, and he got the second down. And then it went back to first down again. And I was sitting there looking at pra- the first day of practice like, we, we don't run third down? <laughs> and it's just like, man, there's no third down. <laughs> and I was just like, man, I had to. And that, that day, that night, I went and I looked up. All the best receivers in CFL, Nick Lewis, G. Roy Simon, Milt Stego, and I got my CFL one-on-one that night. Nice. You didn't do your research early enough. That's All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, second question. Uh, best football memory? Ooh, my best football memory. I w- Man, you know, it- I have two that are tied. I got two that Let's are tied. Him. I have the Bo Levi <laughs> interception. That's gotta. That's gotta be up there. That's gold, man. But this, the next one, is in Montreal. Uh, on offense, we weren't doing that great, and I just, I was frustrated, and I just felt like I needed to make a play, and I told our special teams coach at the time was Cavis Reed. I'm like, throw me in to block a punt. Just let, just let me just, just let me just, just let me do it just let me do it and he's just like okay he's just like okay man I I run out run out there 
And I guess by the grace of God, man, I run out, I get, I get the edge, stick my hand out there, block the punt, <laughs> block the punt. It goes straight in the air. I run and get it, push the punter off of me, and return it for a touchdown. And that, like at the time, I couldn't even believe it was. It was like it was. It was like it was just so amazing. I couldn't even believe that I was doing this. Like. It, it it felt amazing. <laughs> wow, that's uh, that's. I see. I didn't have that. I didn't see that in the stats page. So I, man, yeah, I had to throw the touchdown a, man, pass. It comes up as a it comes up as a punt return. Yeah. So it's just a punt. It's just they just have it a punt return. But not but a block. I block punt. man. I blocked it. Went and picked it up and returned it. You that's, really can do it, <laughs> man. Uh, okay, third question. Biggest name in your phone. Who? The biggest name in my phone. It would have to be Chris Carter. Wait. That's not bad. That's not bad. Eh? Man. Yeah, I would. Man, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't know. See, in football world, yeah, but. I would say, because I make music and yeah. I'm down in Florida, there is a rapper who is known as the Queen of Miami. Her name is Trina. She's a very good friend of mine. Yeah. I would say that she's probably the biggest worldwide name that I that I know. Yeah, bigger than way bigger than Chris Carter. Right. Yeah, so I would say Trina the rapper. All right, I'm gonna have to Google her up. Yeah, yeah, right. Google Google her up. The Queen of Miami. I was impressed with Chris Carter, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, Dad. The Queen beats you. <laughs> uh, all right, that's it for uh, for Antler up this time around. Don't forget uh, to like, subscribe, throw us a comment as well. Tell us what you think and what you'd like to see on Antler up moving forward. Uh, he's Deron Carter. I'm Morley Scott. We'll see you next time on Antler Up. Antler Up, Edmonton, touchdown out. James Wilder Jr.'s got a pair. He'll walk the dog to the end zone. Antler Up, Edmonton, touchdown Elks.